In this video, we're going to talk about when we use the law of cosines, and then we'll see an example of using it. So in the previous video, we uh, explained the formulas and where they come from, um, and now we're going to briefly explain when we use this law of cosines. So it's used for the same reason that the law of sines is used. Um, we use this when we want to solve triangles. And what that means is uh, if you're given some information about some of the sides, some of the angles of a triangle, and you want to find uh, the missing sides and the missing angles, you can use the law of cosines to do that. Or you can use the law of sines. And in an earlier video, we talked about when you can use the law of sines, and it didn't cover every possible case, right? So the law of cosines kind of covers uh, some other ones here. So for the law of cosines, if you're given all three sides of a triangle and no angles, so that would be S, 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 side, side, side. If you're given all three sides, you can use the law of cosines. Notice uh, the law of sines will not work, because for the law of sines, you need at least one angle, right? But for the law of cosines, uh, you really don't. So side, side, side is fine for the law of cosines. Um, another case, and by the way, even though I drew this acute triangle, um, whether the triangle is acute, uh, obtuse, or right, um, then as long as you have all three sides, you can use the law of cosines. Similarly, uh, if you have an angle that's, you're given one side, an angle, and then another side like this, S, A, S, uh, for an SAS type triangle, if you're given a si two sides and the angle between them, okay, two sides and the angle between them, then you can use the law of cosines. Okay, but you cannot use uh, the law of sines. Okay, because the law of sines requires that you um, at least know, you know, a side and the opposite angle. But here we don't know anything about opposites. We know this side. Uh, we don't know the opposite angle. We know this side, not the opposite angle. We know this angle. We don't know the opposite side. So the law of sines will not work, but the law of cosines will. Now, um, and then, by the way, uh, it will work for obtuse triangles or acute triangles or right triangles, as long as you have SAS. Okay, um, okay. now the third case, uh, which I don't recommend using the law of cosines for, is actually SSA. Um, technically speaking, you can use this. Remember, this is the troublemaker case for uh, the law of sines, because it has the, uh, it could lead to the ambiguous case. So SSA would be like here, uh, side, side and then this angle here. So if you're given two sides and uh, one of the angles that's not between the two sides, okay, so either this angle or this angle uh, here, that would be the SSA case. And you could use it for the law of cosines, but, uh, or you can use the law of cosines for that, but I don't recommend it because the algebra gets kind of messy, kind of complicated. Um, it basically boils down to solving a quadratic equation, um, which you don't really want to do that with cosines flying around all over the place. Um, and uh, it, you still have the ambiguous case. Okay, so there's still the ambiguity. Um, so it's best just to stick with the law of sines for this and leave the ambiguity over there because what's nice about the law of cosines is there's no ambiguous case for this, no ambiguous case for this. So for SSS and SAS, uh, or just stick with the law of cosines for these, and for SSA, just stick with the law of sines. Although technically speaking, you can use the law of cosines for SSA, but I definitely don't recommend it. Okay, law of cosines, uh, example one. Oops. Example one. So um, let's say we want to uh, solve triangle ABC given Capital C is 64 degrees, lowercase b is 6, lowercase a is 5. Okay. So we know that we're going to use the law of cosine, so we don't really need to draw a picture. But um, one thing that might be helpful in general, which we haven't actually talked about before with the previous similar problems uh, for the law of sines, is just make a rough sketch in the beginning. So uh, if you don't know whether you're supposed to use the law of sines or the law of cosines, just make a quick sketch to see what type of triangle you have. So if we didn't know we were supposed to use the law of cosines, it's kind of hard to tell just from looking at what we're given. So if we draw a quick picture, okay, just a quick picture, doesn't have to be accurate by any means at all. So we could just say A, B, C, this is 64 degrees, this side is little b, which is 6, this side is little a, which is 5, this side is little c. So what we have is side, angle, side. So this is an SAS triangle. So that would tell us, okay, use the law of cosines, right? So just, um, want to point that out there. Now we didn't have to do that here because we know we're supposed to use the law of cosines because that's what we're talking about. 
But anyway, um, just make a rough sketch in the beginning if you're not sure which one to use, and then based on the type of triangle, based on the information you're given, uh, then you can determine, do I use law of cosines or law of sines? So anyway, continuing with this, uh, now what we're going to do is find little c. So I guess maybe we should have kept the picture up, but we don't really need the picture. Okay, so remember there are three equations for the law of cosines, and the only one that's going to work for us now in this first step is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. Okay, and the reason this is the only one that's going to work is because uh, the other two involve cosine of b and cosine of a, but we don't have angle b or angle a. But we do have angle c, we have little a, we have little b, there's little a again, little b again, and we need to find little c um, eventually. So we can use this one first, let's go ahead and do that. So c squared equals, uh, little a is 5, so this is 5 squared, little b is 6, so this is 6 squared, minus 2 times 5 times 6 times the cosine of uh, angle C, which is cosine of 64 degrees. Okay. Now, um, let's simplify. Eventually, we're going to take a square root of this whole mess here, so we could toss it into a calculator now, but uh, these numbers aren't too bad, so we'll just simplify those just to make it easier um, when we enter into the calculator. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 6 is 60. Cosine of 64 degrees is still there. Uh, 25 plus 36 is 61. So we have 61 minus 60. Cosine of 64 degrees. Okay, now we take the square root of both sides. And normally when we do this, we have a positive and a negative root. But since C is the length of a side of a triangle, C cannot be negative. So C is only going to be the positive root. So that's why we're ignoring the negative root here, because it just wouldn't make sense, because we're talking about the length of a side of a triangle. Okay, now we uh, pull out our calculators. And um, so let's zoom in over here. Make sure that we're in the degree mode. Okay, DEG, DEG for degree because we're taking the cosine of 64 degrees. So now what we're going to do is square root of 61 minus 60 times the cosine of 64. And that's approximately, uh, let's round out to four decimals, 5.8905-ish. So the instructions didn't really specify it. I didn't want to take the time to write it down, I guess. But uh, round to the nearest hundredth. Let's do that in our final answers. So that's why along the way we'll round out to the nearest four decimals, tenth, hundred thousand, tenth, we'll round up to the nearest ten thousandth um, along the way. So this is approximately 5.8905-ish. Okay, and the reason we're going to do that along the way is because um, we've mentioned it before in several videos. Um, if you have to use an approximation to get another value later on, uh, make sure you, you take that approximation and round it out to more decimals than necessary. So the instructions didn't specify, but our final answer should only be out to two decimal places. So if we use one of these approximations, let's go out to four decimals so we have more. Um, so that way, with more decimal places, we can reduce the error. Ho hopefully, we can reduce the error that we get in the other approximations um, if we use this to get those. Okay, so just a good habit to get into to minimize the error. Um, so now what can we do? So we have little c. And so now actually we have all three sides. Okay, we have little c, little a, and little b, and big C. So now what we can do, um, if we want to draw a picture, really maybe just should have left that picture up. Uh, a, b, c, I know this is different from before, 64 degrees, uh, little b is over here, it's 6, little a is over here, it's 5, little c is over here, it's 5.8905 approximately. So now um, let's, we could use the law of cosines again, but let's not do that. Let's just use the law of sines. So if we use the law of sines, uh, we can get either A or B, but let's go ahead and get angle A. So we'll have sine, so we'll separate this. Sine of A over little a equals sine of B, or sorry, sine of C, we don't have B, sine of C over little c. Okay. So then what we're going to have is uh, sine of A equals uh, A times the sine of big C over little c. Okay, we know all this stuff, so it's uh, sine of A 
equals uh, little a, which we're given as 5, times the sine of big C, big C is 64, divided by little c, which we found is approximately 5.8905. Okay, so this right here is why it's important, because now we're using this approximation to get a new value here. So that's why it's important that we keep this rounded out to four decimals. Okay, so maybe technically speaking, this should be an approximate equals now. Um, now we take the inverse sign of this, right? So a is approximately the inverse sign of 5 times the sine of 64 degrees over 5.8905. Now if you watch the Law of Sines videos, you might be thinking, well, hey, shouldn't we also do or um, a is approximately 180 degrees minus this mess? And in general, yeah, but since we, we're dealing with the law of cosines here, since we got this from the law of cosines, uh, we know that there is actually no ambiguous case. Okay, there's no ambiguous case anymore. Because what we started with, okay, we started with an SAS. And when you have an SAS triangle, um, here we add SAS. So when you start with an SAS triangle, there's no ambiguous case. So there's no reason to go through the other piece over here. That's great, that saves us a lot of trouble. So anyway, we can toss this into the calculator and we'll get... Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to be uh, inverse sine of 5 times the sine of 64 degrees. Oops, sine, not natural log. 5 times the sine of 64 degrees uh, divided by 5.8905. Yikes. Okay. And that gets us approximately, so make sure we're in degree mode also, um, and that gets us about 49.7221-ish degrees. So A is about 49.7221-ish degrees. Oops, okay, so then, then we have that there. Now, um, before we move on, so that's this right here, so 49.7221-ish degrees approximately. The only thing left to find now is angle B, which is really simple. Um, we could do the law of sines again, or we could use the law of cosines, or we could just use the fact that we have these two angles and they're in a triangle. But before we do that, I want to point out, um, we could have used the law of cosines, since now we have little c. We could have used the law of cosines to find angle A, and we could have said, um, okay, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. We could have used this, and it absolutely would have worked, it would have been fine, uh, there's no real reason not to, other than the fact that the algebra gets a little messier. Okay, so here we'd have, we'd have to subtract b squared, subtract c squared from both sides, um, then divide both sides by negative 2bc, then we'd have to take the inverse cosine of that entire mess, and we would get the same exact thing if everything worked out okay. okay? But here, the algebra is just simpler over here, and since we're dealing, since we started with SAS, we don't have to worry about the ambiguous case, so that's why in this case it's nicer just to use the law of uh, sines. Okay. But anyway, um, now to find the third angle. And let, let's not do the law of sines again. Let's just say uh, A plus B plus C is 180 degrees. And we have A, it's approximately 49.7221 degrees. Um, and <clears throat> Uh, B is the unknown, and then C is 64 degrees, equals 180 degrees. Okay, so then B is just going to be approximately um, 180 degrees minus 64 degrees minus 49.7221 degrees. So let's see what that is. So we'll go back to our calculator. We'll zoom in and check that out. So 180 degrees minus 64 degrees minus uh, 49.7221 gets us approximately 66.2779. Okay, so B is approximately 66.2779 degrees. Okay, so that's, that's it for this example. Let's uh, summarize the answers, round us to two decimals now. So that's um, little c is about 5.89, capital A is about 49.72 degrees, and capital B is about 66.28 degrees. Okay, so those are our answers, rounded to the nearest hundredth. So that's uh, example one of using the law of cosines.